Hi, hello. My name is Jorge Castro. Uh, I work as a transformation leader. I have some experience in uh, DevOps, SRE, quality, and agile world, working at large enterprises and also with um, with different kind of programs, you know, IT testing and so forth. So I'm very happy to be part of the event. Um, I hope you can enjoy my talk. Okay. Uh, the name of my talk is Building More Reliable Products Through SRE Community of, Community of Practices. Connecting People Makes Better Continuous Delivery. So basically, during my talk, I'm going to share with you real experiences, helping and working with my clients in the challenge to build more reliable products and services. The SRE Community of Practices help us to reach that goal. Uh, first of all, my introduction, as I, as I mentioned before, my name is Jorge Castro. Um, I work as an agility, agility DevOps, um, software engineering test, digital information lead, coach, agile coach as well, and program manager. I'm also, I, 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 am, I am very lucky because I've had the chance to be a speaker and keynote speaker in some events about agile testing and so forth. So you can see here my contact information and also my LinkedIn account. So please uh, add me to your LinkedIn. It would be awesome if we can keep in touch after this session and we can build community and share experiences. Sharing is caring is my mindset. So I believe in that. Um, and actually, that is the reason that why I'm here sharing knowledge. OK. Uh, basically, in this talk, we are going to share our experiences facing the business challenge to build more reliable products to meet customer needs at enterprise level. As you know, when you work with uh, teams or team of team levels in different companies, right, the size is quite important if you are going to talk about uh, large enterprises. So my experience is basically helping these large enterprises to build more reliable products, um, designing and building community of practices. In this case, SRE, community of practices. So the idea with this is that um, when you have this challenge to build more reliable products, uh, you are going to have several obstacles, like uh, lack of team collaboration and so forth. So something key here is that a community help us to foster team collaboration, sharing knowledge, and fix the skill gaps. And also promote the hands of work while we promote the walk the talk culture, right? In different situations. So yeah, that's part of the story. We are going to share with you our real experiences from the trenches dealing with these bottlenecks uh, with software development teams. Let's Let's take let's take care of the basics. Um, I assume that most of you know what is SRE and so forth. But anyway, I think that we need to start with the basics. Okay, what is site reliability engineering? It's a framework, right? It's a framework to um, handle this uh, the operation structure to manage the reliability of the products in production. SRE is what happens when you ask a software engineer to design an operation functions. Um, SRE focuses on running systems in production. And basically, this work is made by development teams. So another approach or another concept um, that is quite important in SRE is about service legit level objectives that the SLOs which are basically these agreements about the expected reliability and availability of products, services in production. Um, it's a kind of agreement between development teams and operations and also our customers. It's quite important for SRE purposes. purposes. Uh, another key point about SRE is incident response processes. Because of we are talking about production, as you know, um, in production, we have a lot of situations, right? Especially bugs or incidents, you know. So SRE is also about these old processes about catching, finding, sorting out, and um, improve 
the root cause of issues in production. So yeah, it's a very important topic about in SRE, these incident response processes. So this is a kind of um, summary about what is SRE, about this framework. Um, so I hope that basically this is this can help us to align our main knowledge about SRE. Okay, uh, about the principles, which are quite important, you know, uh, principles are important in any kind of framework or methodology or mindset. Number one, SRE needs SLOs with consequences. Consequences, yeah, that's quite important. As I mentioned before, SLOs, service level objective, which are agreements about the expected availability and reliability of our products. And those agreements are uh, between or among, sorry, um, development, customers, and operations. So yes, if you don't achieve some specific uh, SLO, there are some consequences about the service, about the quality of your product, about the trust with your clients, about the, how trust you are in terms of your product and the quality of your products. Number two, SRE must have time to make tomorrow better. I think that is quite important because as any other kind of framework, maybe has some similar root cause or a roots uh, or origin in link link mindset and also or or maybe a framework that has some common things with agile, DevOps, and so forth. It's a really also um, continuous improvement, you know. Um, be ready for that and analyze metrics, analyze processes, analyze what is happening in the end-to-end -end of software development to make better products in the future, in the near future. So yeah, that is a very important principle, which is aligned to Kaizen mindset or this continuous improvement mindset, right? To improve the operation of your products in production and the quality, the availability, and the reliability, of course. Uh, SRE teams have the, the ability to regulate their workloads. That is quite important, right? Uh, and actually, I I like to relate this number three topic principle with the um, uh, cognitive loads approach, right? Um, SRE teams, as any any kind of teams, should be able to regulate and manage in a good way the workload to avoid the famous cognitive load, right? And to avoid to overload the work and, and produce a negative impact in the ways of working and the quality and availability, of course. That is quite important. And number four, failure is an option, sorry, failure is an opportunity to improve. That is quite important. Um, and actually, this is part of a, I'm not going to say a new mindset, at least a good mindset that we need to sell and we need to foster in our in our development teams, right? That uh, failure is not something bad, it's something that we need, we need to use and we need to get if we want to be masters on something, if we want to get the best quality of something, if we want to do better and better in each iteration, most probably failure is the path. So yeah, so it's quite important that we need to foster this kind of mindset in our teams. And actually this number four principle, I relate this topic to the psychological safety approach, right? Because it's about feeling well about fail, but having the, 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 um, the idea that you need to take the best from that failure to improve the future, right? To improve your product. So yeah, that's quite important. Okay, so now after this alignment about basic uh, topics in SRE concepts, we can talk about um, a real story, right? A real experience. So real life, real life business, right? Dealing with customers, with uh, developers, tester, production, 
with issues and so forth. So yeah, uh, once upon a time, we were working at, at, a, at a large enterprise, an IT large enterprise. Um, something that happened in that company is, is this, right? Uh, we had a global and diverse teams involved in continuous delivery. Um, yes, we, we had people from Latin America, from Europe, from different countries as well. So more than maybe 600 people working with different products, uh, moving code to production, right? <laughs> Maintaining coding, uh, doing quality and so forth. And of course, um, people, uh, software is about people, right? I think that is key to understand if you are in this business. So in, in, in our teams, we had different people with different cultures, time zones, skills, uh, ways of working and so forth, right? People from different roles as well. So that is something quite important, right? If you want to develop whatever practice or whatever enterprise capability in your company, uh, my first advice is to understand the reality of your team, how global is, how global your team are, and also how diverse your team are in terms of technology, locations, time zones, skills, ways of working, and so forth. So that's, that's, that was part of our situation with this company. In that company, we had some problems with our mobile products, with our um, web applications, um, and actually with our in-house applications. Uh, those were the problems. Um, after Go Production, we face that, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you. And also we face another problems, like uh, well, we had not reliable product services, you know, we had problems in production, so our products were not reliable. Uh, low product, lo sorry, low product availability as well. Uh, we had some times that our products were not able to uh, lack of enterprise capabilities, yes. Uh, we had only a few people with strong capabilities in, as example, SRE, right? Uh, we didn't have a pool of uh, engineers with SRE capabilities, some of them. So yeah, it was a problem. Uh, low organizational resilience. I think that is quite important, right? Because if you don't have that, most probably when you when you face a kind of change in your architecture, infrastructure, platforms, as, and so forth, uh, you are going to suffer a lot of pains <laughs> uh, during that change, of course. And finally, lack of collaboration and sharing, right? We had some people that they knew the business of SRE, they, they were very technical, um, and as I, as I mentioned, right, we had people from different countries, different but uh, we noticed that uh, we suffer a lack of collaboration and sharing. People weren't working together. Um, it it looked like uh, we we work to different companies, you know. So we 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 didn't share uh, goals. Okay, that was the con that that was the the context. We we needed to change, right? And as you know, change is hard, as Nancy Ahart said. At, but not changing is worse. I totally agree with her. So we decided to change, of course. Because of the situation before that I explained before, we decided to apply community of practices, COPs. I like this um, concept, this uh, meaning about from Etienne Wenger and Beverly Wenger. Uh, regarding to them, COP is groups of groups of people who share a concern or a passion uh, for something, they do and learn how to do it better as they interact re regularly. I think I like this idea because at the end, that is the approach that we wanted to sell to our client, right? To our company. Um, community is about people. So people taking care of a problem, right? A business problem, a real business problem. And um, communities, people learning together to improve something, right? Have fun and interact, right? In a positive, in a proactive way. Okay, um, about this 
first approach, okay, we said, okay, we have the these community practices, we have these challenges about SRE and our reliable products, lack of collaboration, lack of avail um, low availability and so forth. We had our first, first thought about it. Number one, our community should help us to building ways of working, SRE ways of, ways of working, uh, foster experimentation, yes, because we noticed that most of the problems that we had is because didn't want to try SRE practices or DevOps practices or new tooling and so forth. So yes, we, we had to foster experimentation. Also, which and also critical topic is about collaboration, right? As you know, the most important asset in any kind of company, more than software, is people and their skills and their knowledge. And if you want to develop this kind of capabilities through your entire organization, collaboration should be part of your DNA as a company. So that was part of our thoughts that we were looking for this community. And finally, build outcome center planning. Very sure about designing a community, not only for, you know, bringing pe people together and share stuff. We wanted to impact business, right? Um, make people design and run the community, look for the results to get impact in our outcomes. So, so that was part of the approach. We said that we decided to create our SRE site reliability engineering community of practices. Our our second thought was about that learning experience, right? The experiential learning and learning by doing or walk the talk learning, right? Um, the idea was to we need to learn new stuff, we need to uh, prepare people to learn more stuff build new capabilities, SRE capabilities in our community, through our community. And for that purpose, we follow this approach, this, uh, this learning by doing approach. First of all, concrete experience. So basically, we in our community, we shared real experiences, uh, real situations working with SRE problems with our clients. We have a reflective observation on the experience. So basically we analyze the good things, the bad things, uh, the context of the experience, the, the, the metrics involved, the people involved and all the situation, because we consider that um, we, 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 we need to get, you know, that experience from this kind of um, shared knowledge from our, from our community. And then we, we went to the abstract conceptualization which is was concluding and learning from the experience, right? So basically it was, okay, uh, about this situation, new situation, new skills, new practices, uh, I analyze, you know, the context, the experience, and the metrics and so forth. So I conclude with some ideas, right? About what are the best movements to implement this approach in my teams, right? Maybe run some workshops, promote some gamification approaches, um move some mentoring and coaching uh and finally learning by doing right active experimentation in this point something that which is key is about psychological safety or basically uh trust in your experiment uh don't feel you know panic about failures and do the experiment, right? And and do it, right? That is the most important part. Of course, uh, do experiments in, you know, uh, maybe a small context, and then if that works, you can escalate the solution, of course. That was our approach for learning by doing. Okay, about the team, right? I think it's a quite um, traditional team, you know? Uh, we have our community uh, in, with different engineers from different countries, uh, business units and so forth. And we have a core team inside the community, you know? The core team was in charge to um, design, to facilitate and organize at least the first uh, sessions and the first steps of the community because our purpose was to rotate this core organization team. So anyone in the community could have the chance to 
uh, organize some sessions of the COP. We have the leader, which is basically the 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 guy, the the, the person, sorry, in charge to lead this all this approach, deal with the upper managers, with the stakeholders, with the with the other communities to design and to foster the best practices inside the community and drive the community in terms of value, impact, and the best for the practice and its development, you know? So yeah, the, the lead is a very important role. And as part of this approach, we had the backlog of the community, you know, with all the uh, challenges that um, we we wanted to develop and sort out with our community, you know, lack of some skills, certifications, some business implementation, some SRE customer challenges, and so forth. That was part of our COP backlog, you know, uh, the gaps about our current capabilities in terms of SRE. Um, as part of that, we also have o OKRs, right? Our community of practices, our SRE community of practices. Uh, we have some OKRs. Okay, um, something that was quite important was learn from the past, especially from the failures. And as you may know, um, this approach to create an SRE community was not the first approach to create a community inside the company. So that is why uh, learning from the past was quite important in our experience. So about this topic, Please be sure that you understand and share this voice with your team members, with your stakeholders and so forth. COP is an investment. So it's an investment, investment of time, it's been investment of, of uh, talent and so forth. So you need, to, you need to handle this approach in that way. It's an investment. And then SRE, COP, align it to business strategy. That is quite important. You need to understand what are the business context, the business challenges. So with your SRE community of practices, move your OKRs inside your community, produce impact to these business goals, right? The business challenges are going to be more products, velocity, quality, reliability, um, win more clients and so forth. And I'm pretty sure that SRE, COP, can help you with that. I'm pretty sure about it. Okay, some examples about OKR, about OKRs that we we designed in our community. Number one, improving reliability and availability. Okay, that was one objective. And as an example, key results achieve an X, X percent reduction in the number of incidents impacting production services. Another example, number two, improve team collaboration. Uh, key results launch X cross functional workshops or hackathons with global groups from different teams, right? And number three, increase SRE enterprise capabilities. Key results increase participation in SRE related training courses or certification by X percent within the community. Okay, those are examples that we use in our community. You can add more, you can choose a different ones, but basically, please remember that. Depending of your business challenges, depending of the business strategy that you are you are aligned to, you need to define your OKRs. Okay, uh, now this is a very very important tool that you can use to design your community. This is the minimal viable community, the MBC, and as you can see, as you can see here, it's a canvas uh, that helps you to design your first approach of SRE community. Actually, you can use this for any kind of community, but um, in this case, we use that for community. So now we are going to um, check topic by topic, you know, um, and we are going to share our experience about that. Okay, number one is the purpose. In our case, our purpose was bringing together experts and enthusiasts, ent sorry, enthusiasts to share knowledge, skills, and experiences related to improving the reliability and performance of digital services and build doers culture. That is quite important, right? Because more than bringing people to work together, to share knowledge, to help each other, also we want to make builders, right? We want to, make, we want to build doers. 
doers that's at the end they are the ones to create impact through experiments to try new stuff and to deal with real real problems in production or in business so that was our purpose for our community uh number two the audience well basically the audience of the community were our SRE engineers, developers, DevOpsers, operation engineers, and so forth, right? All the people involved in end-to-end -end software development, production development, they were our, our public, our uh, team members in the community. Number three, both values. Uh, we promote the values of sharing knowledge, experimentation, collaboration, and outcome base, which was quite important for the success, for the future success of our community. Number four, the goal, right? Um, well, the OKRs that I showed before, they are examples of the goal. Um, please be sure to align to, to align to the transformation and business goals. That is quite important that you align your community goals to the transformation approach that you are doing in your company and your business goals. Um, about number five is quite important is that uh, expectation, you know, and um, basically it's about the uh, the community member experience, right? You know, we had in the market developer experience. We have, sorry about that. That was, that was Alexa. <laughs> um, so we have in the market uh, community, sorry, we have in the market um, customer experience, um, developer experience. And basically, this topic is about community member experience, which is a function of reality and expectation. And that is quite important because. We said before that the community, the SRB community, is an investment. We said before that you need to align your SRB community OKRs or goals to your business strategy, and you need to have a outcome-based approach inside your community and about all activities that you that you are going to do, training sessions, workshop, and so forth. So that is quite important as well. Your your team member, the people that is going to be part of the community are your clients. So you need to take care of your clients and you need to take care about why they thought about the community and why, why and what they are expecting from the community. It's a key topic, right? So for that approach, for example, at the beginning of the community, we ran these kind of uh, feedback loops and we, we got, we, we got uh, this feedback from our SRE engineers with our, from our team members. Very interesting, right? Uh, as you can see here, basically people is saying that they 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 don't want from the community more PPT or more you know uh, talks, right? They want real experiences, you know, hands-on approaches, and also they they wanted to to know more real failures or real victories or success stories in SRE projects. That was quite important for us, especially for designing our, com our community. Okay, uh, number six, the roles. Basically, as I mentioned, we had the COP lead, the core team, you know. Number seven, the rules. Basically, it's about the schedule, the participation, core team agreements, and so forth. You know, all the, you know, it's about it's about all the topics, you know, all the topics that, that you need to set up with your teams in terms of the function the oper operative function of your community. Number eight, goals, how to prioritize backlog, OKRs, updates, learning initiatives, decision making, and so forth. That is quite important, right? About, sorry, about number nine, communication. Uh, basically are the channels to communicate inside your community, Slack, Teams, internal social networking, etc. Okay, uh, a very important topic about these are the metrics, so metrics recommendation. Uh, well, basically three. Uh, we recommend that you use the metrics of the metrics of shares and collaboration. Basically, how your teams collaboration is collaborate with your other teams. An indicator of that, the number of experiments, Kaizen experiments, for example, and finally the outcomes. They are quite important. The quality, the speed, the savings, the reliability that you are you are uh, reaching because of your because of your community and its operation. How do we make COP lasts longer and more engaged. Yeah, I think that is a good topic because uh, we noticed that in the previous COP approaches, the COP, you know, at the beginning was strong, but after some iterations, it disappeared. So we wanted to change that. And basically for that approach to make 
larger, long, larger communities, we apply, we apply this, the minimum enjoyable game. So we apply gamification, right? We combine some gamification approaches with lean setup approaches to design the most valuable and simple games inside the community to foster uh, collaboration, learning, and so forth. So make our team members enjoy the experience. For that approach, I recommend you to use this framework, Octalysis. It's a game design and human design framework, very useful. Um, and also, uh, as part of that, we create this, this game, right? Inside the community, we create that reliability league game, which is basically a, a combination of game design, Octalysis framework, and human design approaches, and also link strap. And this game was quite simple, right? We have uh, the people with strong skills in SRE who who were the Batmans inside uh, inside this game, and each Batman has the psyche, right? The SRE psyche, and those SRE psyche were the juniors or the developers that need to develop SRE capabilities and so forth. So these Batman work together with the psyches, um, and the Batman do whatever they need, whatever uh, she needs to do to create more heroes, you know, to develop the side, sidekick uh, and move their practice, their skills to another level. It was very funny, you know, we had a lot of backmans, we had a lot of sidekicks, uh, robins. It was very funny to work with that. Finally, what we achieved, a lot of things, I think, increased number of experiments, that was quite important, you know, do more experiments in a company, improve services, availability, of course, uh, we, we, we improved that, that metric that actually was a pain, was a real, a real pain in our business. We improve our turnover, right? Uh, because uh, with this kind of approach, gamification, community, people feel different, right? This kind of uh, learning, they feel motivated to share with their mates and have fun through gamification. It helps us to improve the turnover rate. And finally, the developer experience. Um, yes, uh, when we run some feedback loops about the MPS of the sessions of the community, we got very good results about the experience of our developers. So finally, some learn, learn lessons. Rotate the COP core team, that is quite important. Please try to more people can have the responsibility to, this, to uh, facilitate different sessions, that is quite important. You are what your community is. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. So if your community foster team collaboration, experimentation, outcome based, the people inside the community is going to get that. So please be sure about it. Your business grows as your communities and people grow. Yeah, that is quite important. If you can impact your business, I'm pretty sure that your community is going to grow, not only people and may, maybe also in budget and more resources. So yeah. And finally, COP improved developer experience. Yeah, that is quite important. So if you are if you are facing some uh, livings of developers or some bad numbers in terms of developer experience, I recommend you to use COPs and also gamification for that approach. SRE COP can help you to build, enable, and develop SRE enterprise capabilities as part of your business goals while building social and technical learning spaces where people is benefit and have fun also. Right, people and business oriented. Collaboration inspire people to become doers, and those doers they make possible to build reliable products. So finally, some books that I recommend. Those are really nice books that I can recommend you. You can search for them on internet. So enjoy it, enjoy them. Finally, please remember, don't forget, we all have dreams, so help and share more. Sharing is caring, and remember also have fun, continuous fun. So that's it. So I really appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Thank you very much for your time. And please uh, reach me out after the session and add me to your LinkedIn accounts.